You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Wednesday, August. No, it's not. It's Tuesday. Today it's, is Tuesday. It's Tuesday. You're failing me, man. You're the one that I'm tells me what day it is today. Jumping ahead to what <laughs> it's Tuesday. August 27th. And we are taking a look at Hymns of the Green Season. Yay. Why do we call it the Green Season? Because we do. We have a pastor here. We should ask him that. I'm not we will in just a moment. I'm, I'm colorblind, so. Oh, that's that's true. true. Don't ask the colorblind oh, pastor well. why we call it the green. That was, that was a horrible setup or a really great setup. I'm not sure which way to look at that. Thanks to our friends at Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. So what season is it, Pastor Merritt Dembski? <laughs> It's that season after Pentecost, this Pentecost season or after Trinity, you know, so people, depending on who you talk to, will say, oh, yeah, it's X number of days after Pentecost or X number after Trinity. But um, it's this common season, this season talking about the church growing and uh, us growing in our Christian discipleship and all that kind of stuff. So I think uh, what my color seeing friends have told me <laughs> is that things that grow are green. Yes, and they so, are. Okay, perfect. I know my parents always used to ask, what color is an evergreen tree? Brown. <laughs> like, no, what, what's an evergreen tree? Brown. <laughs> evergreen <laughs> tree. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the, the idea of the church growing and stuff. And so uh, I just heard someone talk about this the other day that you don't... Uh, uh, one year versus three year lectionary, all that kind of stuff that sometimes depending on the lectionary you're in, you see a little bit more structure of, you know, uh, uh, pattern to the readings and stuff. But uh, sometimes it does feel like just a whole bunch of just random things for <laughs> that season for 20 something weeks, you know. <laughs> so. Although I noticed that we must be getting near uh, in, into the second half of uh, of the season after Pentecost because we started hearing a lot of uh, end of times things in our reading this past weekend. But it's not November yet. That's no, when we get to that, No, but we're right? getting there. It's August. It's almost September. It's almost Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's why it's the green season. <laughs> And the red season comes up. All right, we have some hymns to dig into today as well. Unfortunately, uh, they are not color-coded, so let's dig into them. 708 is what we're looking at. First, Lord, the I love with all my heart. Pastor Dembski, why did you choose this as one of our hymns to discuss today? Well, it's a, I, I always enjoy singing this hymn, even though I understand that we always have to be careful when we're singing that we're actually... Uh, talking about Jesus and talking about Christ and not just talking about ourselves. So if we spend 10 minutes being like, look at how much I love you, Lord. I love you a lot. This much. This is how much, you know, it's like, okay, we got to be careful. And yet we see the Psalms and we see the Psalms talking about, Lord, I, I desire to hear your word. I want to walk in your paths, you know. And so you get kind of that, uh, uh, not only just that the tune I really like, and it's mm-hmm. a beautiful tune, but um, uh, hearing that we we pray to him, we look to his tender mercy. There's nothing in this world that, even though there's so much pleasure in this world, there's nothing that um, we would desire more than God's word. And that's what we should be praying. That's what we should be saying as Christians, that in Christ, there's nothing in this world that should take us away from him, but that he is always with us, that he's the one that breaks sorrow when it's upon us. He's the one that we trust in, that uh, when we are in him, nothing can shake us. I mean, there's just so many words of gospel and peace in this uh in this hymn um and you know there's when you look at the passages that this is based on first peter four or sorry first john four first peter one uh, and first thessalonians four uh and when you look at those passages and you see the the beauty of god's promises to us so you, you're just singing all constantly praising god saying you've given us all of this you've given us all of this mercy and this richness um and of course right at the very end and then from death awaken me mm-hmm. that these mine eyes with joy may see O son of god thy glorious face my savior and my font of grace lord jesus christ my prayer attend my prayer attend and i will praise thee without end and that's what we're that's what we're looking forward to we're looking forward to that last day when christ returns and we are face to face with our savior praising him without any of this uh sinful nature holding us back getting distracted by the things of this world Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, this is a favorite of so many people Um, and Kelly Schumacher has a beautiful book now uh, with this hymn too, so you can actually like read the text. Um, but but I I don't know if I ever actually um, fully thought about that this this hymn is um, a prayer. Like the whole thing is a prayer, which I mean it says that right there in the second line. Uh, so you'd think I would you know see that, but um, but it's a it's a prayer and it it kind of walks you through um, the whole Christian. 
uh, Christian life together of being here, being in sorrow, um, and and dealing with trials and temptations and struggles, um, and then and then getting to the last day when we get to be with Jesus. Mm-hmm. I mean, and uh, to that point of it being a prayer, uh, talking about. Lord, grant that, uh, in the second verse, grant that I in every place may glorify thy lavish grace and help and serve my neighbor. Let Mm -hmm. no false doctrine me beguile. Let not Satan my soul defile. Give strength and patience to me. Mm -hmm. That that we would just continue to follow him. And and all the times we talk about um, um, having... there's so many ways that people say it, but like warm and cuddly Jesus, you know, like where's, where's like the, the yeah. masculinity of our Christian faith, you know, mm-hmm. like don't let anything pull me away. Don't let the, don't let the devil defile my soul. Give me strength and patience unto you. I mm-hmm. mean, when we talk about all the other things in this life that we try to have patience for and try to be persistent in, and we think, yeah, that's in our Christian faith too, that we pursue this. We, we have patience. We, we, mm-hmm. uh, we endure when there is difficulty and it's not a matter of, Well, Christian faith means everything's simple. No, things are going to be tough. But now in Christ, you have patience and you endure and you've got all this uh, uh, darkness and difficulty around you that you have patience and strength to face. Mm -hmm. For time's sake, (laughs) let's move on to 722. Lord, take my hand and lead me. 722. Why did you select this hymn for today? Again, a beautiful prayer. Um, where this is what again we should be praying that as we go through life the lord would take our hand that he would be the one guiding us and directing us not that we would be uh the ones taking christ's hand and leading him through things and being like okay fix this now because i got into some trouble here but <laughs> we're, we're saying take my hand and you're the one leading me along the path so you almost have a a picture of you know the parent child relationship you know, the, the take my hand and lead me, um, that you would provide for me, you'd give me everything I need. Um, I know that uh, you, yeah, uh, just as I'm saying this now, I picture uh, our uh, our daughter running up and grabbing my hand when something mm-hmm. scary is coming up, you mm-hmm. know, like yeah. she'll, she'll go and run and then she'll see a dog and she'll just stop dead and put her hand up like, okay, dad, I'm ready. <laughs> like, I don't know what that thing is. Come, come take my hand. And, um, and that, that, parent-child relationship, making us think of the, um, our Father who art in heaven, you know, that Christ, that our Father invites us to pray to him as his dear child. And so we do pray to him, and we pray that he would be our rock of ages, that he would direct everything, that nothing would stop us from looking to Christ, um, that he would take us to the very end of everything, and that we'd always be holding on to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of comfort uh, singing a hymn like this, or, or any of the three we're talking about, really. These are all in the in the trust section of the hymnal, um, and that you know we 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 rely on him, and that it's not about us; mm-hmm. it's about uh, leaning on on Jesus and uh, and trusting that he will um, guide us in our way. Mm-hmm. Right, I and. Mean, the, a lot of these two just have such beautiful word pictures yeah. as you're really, like the storm raging, um, the uh, what did I just uh, the shadows lengthening as night comes as yeah. as uh, death is approaching. Peoples. Yeah, all these things and mm-hmm. and when you dig into each of those, that could be you know six segments right there of just digging <laughs> into like each of these pictures right. in here. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, and this one's based on Psalm 23. I just looked at that. Huh. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Yeah, if you ever are <laughs> looking in, just... <laughs> if, if when you're looking in LSB, if you look at the bottom left or sorry, bottom right corner of any hymn, you see the 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 passages that a hymn yeah. is based on, which is always wonderful that when you look in the hymnal and when you look at the the hymns and in the services, you see exactly where we're pulling from scripture. That we didn't just make stuff up to say, <laughs> but we're like, "Oh yeah, this is how scripture talks." And so we're teaching we're talking as the saints have talked through history yeah it's pretty cool all right 729 i am trusting the lord jesus this is 729 in lutheran service book uh i am trusting the lord jesus now this is one that the language has gone back and forth on uh depending on what hymnal you're using oh really Mm -hmm. yeah in lw i think it was i am trusting you lord jesus if Hmm. i remember correctly in lutheran worship it's I never possible. Sung it out yeah. of there. I know I've heard both, but I couldn't tell you. Oh, this hymnal did this one, this one. You know, I, I'm yeah. not sure. But oh, come on! <laughs> I am trusting the Lord Jesus. Why did Why did you select this hymn for our discussion today? And once again, um, all of these, even though this isn't in the prayer section of the hymnal, mm-hmm. it's in the trust section. Um, it, again, it's a beautiful prayer that we're trusting Him for everything. 
and once again, we fail to do this. We, we, we don't always trust. We, we fear, love, and trust other things above God in, in those moments. We confess our sins. We return to his forgiveness. We see his mercy. But we pray as Christians ought to be praying that we would trust him for everything, for our salvation that is free, for our pardon, for our cleansing, that he would guide us knowing that his power never fails and that... Um, that we will never fall as we are in Christ, that nothing can separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus, not even death. So all of this is just another beautiful prayer of our trust in his promises. Mm -hmm. And this one points us, uh, points us to the sacrament too, uh, the verse uh, three mm -hmm. about um, cleansing in the blood, yeah. the crimson flood. Yeah, the crimson flood, not only the, the, the water with the word yeah. washing us, mm -hmm. but also uh, receiving his body and blood, that crimson flood that comes to us and satisfies us, um, that he is the one that makes us holy. It is by mm -hmm. his grace and that his faith gives, or his, uh, the Holy Spirit gives us faith in those promises. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just a beautiful prayer. Uh, the prayer section, the confession absolution section, the trust section, I mean, all of it has great stuff, They're but like <laughs> some of these have some specific great prayers beyond just praise right. you know just some mm -hmm. prayers that kind of shape how we ought to be praying yeah yeah mm -hmm. and we have what a minute yes left, maybe um so <laughs> so these are all out of the out of the trust section like we said um when when would someone use this section of the hymnal um in their i don't know maybe in church but but more so in their in their daily life i mean uh any any day is a good day to use, you know. <laughs> uh, but but um, you know when you when you think about difficult times, um, I know uh, some family, uh, sorry, uh, some people connected to our congregation had lost a family member recently, mm -hmm. and in those moments, being able to say, whatever's going on, I'm trusting you. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting you. I don't get why this is happening. I don't understand why this tragedy has taken place, but I'm trusting you. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to you for everything. Yeah. And musically, 729, I am trusting the Lord Jesus, is relatively simple, I think, to teach children as well. Mm. Something that can be learned early on mm -hmm. um, musically. And it's very short. Right. Yeah. So it's not a lot to teach. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Great hymn for uh, learning with little ones. Uh, I think I feel like we've, back in my education days, we used that in, <laughs> uh, in chapel services as well, uh, teaching, you know. Yeah introducing um, new hymns to them. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Dembski, for joining us to uh, to talk about hymns of the green season mm -hmm. here on the Coffee Hour. Always a delight to talk with you. Thanks for being our guest. It was good to be here. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs>